Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. And over there, we have John Lewandowski. Hey. Hi, Hi John. Hey. What's your DNA? <laughs> 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 All right. So we're starting the season off with jokes and everything. Um, it's preseason. We have first two NHL sanctioned preseason games. And our first preseason game uh, with me and John and the first Predators preseason game sanctioned by the NHL that was not a scrimmage since 2019. Um, so trust me, I'm looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to preseason for months now. Um, it gets about July and I'm pretty much, okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yes, uh, but before we take our show, I would like to let you guys know that our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585. Uh, they will outfit you with all your hockey needs, uh, local small rinks, outdoor rinks. They're all opening soon. Go get your ice skates, skate sharpened, get you some hockey gear. Get you some fan gear. They got jerseys. They got hats. They got gloves, sticks, pads. They even have goalie helmets. So, whatever you may need. Hey, if you want to go as a hockey player for Halloween, that's coming up. You can buy all your equipment there. <laughs> so, uh, the Predators took out a split squad between the Panthers, one at one o'clock. Um, we were going to cover that, but I had a uh, emergency happen in my home. So um, uh, we we took care of that before game two and during game two. Um, yeah. Uh, me and John both communicated that whole time. <coughs> I also apologize, folks, if you are wondering why the emergency is one reason we weren't live. The other is I'm recovering from a sinus cold and I do not want to give it to my co-host. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> medical procedures and having health. Uh, I don't want to, I just don't, I'm being a good friend here. Um, yeah. uh, the one good thing for, for all, for me and John is so, uh, with not having normal training camps, we're not able to look at the players that we're not going to see for a couple years, maybe a year. And in giving this, we're able to do that. Right. We are. So that's one of the things. Some of these guys won't make Milwaukee, won't make Florida. They'll go back to juniors, give them another right. year. We'll see what happens, but I just wanted to, to, to make that clear. Um, I know that uh, I want to give a tip of the cap right now because the game just got underway. The Seattle Kraken are hosting or having their number first preseason game right now. They just dropped the puck. Um, so tip of the cap right now to the uh, Seattle Kraken who are yep. taking the Vancouver Canucks. Welcome to the league. Your first NHL Welcome. game. Um, I know that that's how important those are because I remember when we came to the AHL, how, how important the preseason games for us were. Um, so stats in the, in, uh, in the game were uh, shots were 36-30 for the Florida Panthers. Uh, Faceoff was 54-46 for the Panthers. Both teams was, had one goal on the power play, one for the Predators, one for the Panthers. Preds were one for four. Panthers were one for six. The Preds penalty kill really looked good, except for on one occasion, and it was kind of more fluky than anything. The yeah, it was. So good, in fact. I'll get to what happened later. But penalty minutes wise, this team really lacked discipline to start. Uh, yeah. Nine penalty minutes to fifteen. Not good. No. They out, they out hit their opponent 22 to 18, the Preds. Uh, out had more block shots, 15 to 11, and had, well, 10 more giveaways than the Panthers at 19 to 9. Right. Um, in the game, uh, starting, I'm going to start with the goalies because I, I think that's where I really should. Um, in that, to start the game was Connor Ingram. Uh, good to see Connor back in a Preds jersey. Yeah, it and is. Sharp. Uh, he stopped uh, 20 of 21, giving up one goal on even strength with a save percentage of 0.952. 
looking like the Connor Ingram of the AHL season. Right. Um, on the other hand, there's a guy I kind of just want to take to goalie class, which is Devin Cooley. Look, I'm not hating on the guy. He's got ethic and he's got heart. It's just he's got to put those together and and have the confidence in himself. I think he was shattered by the loss in the playoffs with Florida, and, and I think he needs to get that confidence back because when he first started playing in Florida and he had the confidence, he played great. Once he started getting shelled all the time, it really rattled him, and, and I don't think he's recovered just yet. So right. um, he stopped 11 of 15 with a save percentage of 0.733. That will not cut it in the AHL. Um, he stopped six of nine on even strings, four of five on power play, and one of one short handed. Yeah. Um, in net for the Florida Panthers was Simeon Montebal. Montebal played pretty well. Yeah, he did. He had some moments where focus was a little off. But he played pretty well for somebody who was a backup mostly last season. Right. Um, stopped 17 of 19 with a save percentage of 0.895. Not horrible for a guy who's been ice cold as far as playing, but not great. Um, and then you have, I believe that to be Evan, Evan Fitzpatrick. Uh, he stopped 9 of 11. Uh, including um, a uh, okay, yeah, nine of eleven with a save percentage of 0.818. All right, starting in the game, the first period was pretty blah. I think they were trying to figure each other out. Yeah, um, I do too. And I also think that they were trying to get their legs because I saw a lot of dump and chase by both teams. Yeah. And, and, and I mean by both. I, I don't think that necessarily it, it's a bad thing to do that early in training camp. I just hope that it doesn't become a repetitive thing. Another yeah, thing. Yeah, me neither. With camp coming after the second for Milwaukee sometime soon, we're going to be looking at cuts anywhere, but as soon as tomorrow – and as late as probably the third. Right. Um, after that, the next few games, they're going to roll with their actual roster with a few AHL guys that they're just keeping an eye on at that point. You know, guys that may make the roster, but you're, you got to fight for it. Right. You got to show up. So those are, those are some of the things. And especially if it's somebody that the, the franchise has their eyes on. And I'm not talking just the Preds are going to do this. Everyone's going to do it. Because they're going to want, with the lack of camps, they're not going to have the time. All righty, folks. Sorry about that. The host had a little bit of a cough problem for a few seconds. Um, like I said, still getting over a cold. Um, but back to what we were talking about. Most, yeah. mo the one thing I really like stood out to me in the in the first period alone was there were a couple players, okay? One of them was Richard. Anthony Richard really stood out in the first period for the reason of his his tenacity, his chasing the puck, his speed. Yeah. All of the things that we know we know here in Milwaukee that he was good at, but now he's bringing it up a level. Yes, he is. And, and he needed to do that, or he's going to be an AHLer. Right. Or you'll get labeled like Grimaldi did and then end up in a system like us, and then you'll go up. Right. Um, I, I just think that at that point, you, you really he, – he impressed in that manner and, and then still had the smarts to keep the guy in front of him in the tenacity. And then when the guy either passed beyond him – he would go and chase down the puck and back check or four check. Uh, given yeah, he situation. would. And, and, and it, it was just good to see him back to that compared to the last we saw of him. Right. 
and, and now understand this, I haven't seen an AHL game in almost two years. Five hundred. Right, either of us. <laughs> 500 and some odd days. I went to the school day game. John did not. <laughs> right. It was a lot of fun watching that because it ended up um, much of a tip of the cap because I never really said it in, a, in, in or did a video that night um, of that because of everything that happened um, COVID. Um, uh, that, you know, uh, San Antonio Rampage, if I have any Rampage fans left, we will miss you. And thank you for being supporters of your team. Thank you for watching us while we talk about your team. We do try to keep it as unbiased as possible. Right. All right. So given that, and I'm going to say this, um, just as much as I do rip on your team, I'm going to do it to ours. So I have the overall list, but first, let's get into scoring. Scoring in the first period, Tanner, what do you know? You know. Uh, scoring is first of the preseason with an assist from Trennan and Favreau. Not much of a surprise there. Half of the herd line doing it again. Right. So one thing shortly after that, that really caught my attention, and it was a nasty shot. How much better Trennan has gotten on his shot, on his hits, on his yep. the puck, his speed, he's faster. Whatever he did the uh, this offseason, do it again. It helped. From this point on. Right. Yeah. Because he scored a wicked shot from the wall, backhand, stick side. And it went top shelf far down in the net. It didn't even yep. get far. It went under the net. I mean, it was a beautiful shot. Um, Trenton scored that goal. Uh, with an assist to Richard, which he stood out there too. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, then it, it it kind of made that turn. Um, after the ten minute mark of the uh, Reds had pulled. Um, actually, I think it was. Wait a minute. Got to double check that. Uh, okay. Uh, after. After the third, in the third, they pulled him. Um, uh, then you had a goal scored by Frank Bertrano, uh, his first with an assist by former Milwaukee Admiral and Nashville Predator Patrick Hornquist and uh, Kirstad. Um, that was just one of those grit goals. He went to the front of the net, did everything right, worked hard. Um, nice to see. Um, still hockey played like that. I, right. I like, it, it's still nice to see that shoot the puck on net, go to the front of the net. Crash it really by. is nice to see that. Yeah. I, I remember playing NHL 2003 and switching all of my line combos to crash the net because that's how you score goals. Right. You put the puck on net. When the puck goes to the net, you crash. You get to the, the front of the net. net. Yeah. And you always follow your shot. Yep. Um, so many guys nowadays don't really do that, but no. Yeah. All right. Um, then I think it's second, kind of becoming a lost art almost. Yeah. I wish Dump and Chase would become a lost art. Me too. But it's such a safe way to get the puck in without getting killed. It really it. is. Um, then in the third period, uh, think, oh, Frank. Frank. Frank Bertrano scored again, his second with an assist from Gordon Quist, his second, and uh, Zach Dalpe. Dalpe has played for everyone from the Wolves to Carolina to Charlotte to, I mean, he's a he's a journeyman at this point, but it's nice to see he's still in the league. Yeah, it is. Uh, then scoring is uh, Alexi Hopeniemi. I hope I got that right. Uh, he scored his first, I believe, all, but this is his second year in North American hockey, uh, with an assist from Coddington and Mackenzie Weger. Now, Mackenzie Weger got a little bit under my skin with how he acted with uh, Pitlick. He kind of grabbed him and wrestled him to the ice for a little while and was not exactly very 
um, how you put it, uh, it wasn't very sportsmanlike. It was yeah. behind the play. Uh, I don't. I didn't see much from the Preds player at the time. Now, if there's a replay somewhere, I may go back and look at it again. Right. I'll give you guys an update when when we do our next video. Most likely when we do our video on on the roster transactions coming up in the next week. Uh, we also right. have two Tampa Bay games coming up in the next week. Um, following the uh, Feb uh, the February <laughs> uh, the October sixth Preds game, um, it will be me and um, I believe my friend Tercel or uh, John's wife doing shows. Uh, John. Uh, I am hoping more so uh, me and my friend Tercel, John's wife, will be needing to help him with his medical stuff going on. Right. And, um, but I'm just giving a heads up. The uh, April's preseason game is October 7th. So um, we will be, I will be doing a live show after that on Facebook and YouTube. Um, so uh, get your tickets. I mean, Milwaukee's a great time right now for sports. Great time. Also, a tip of the cap, Milwaukee Brewers for clinching yeah. <laughs> the title, title. I forgot that in the beginning of the video. I am so sorry to our owner. <laughs> the owner of the Admirals, not not myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Then scoring Rem Pitlick, finishing off where he finished last year while doing very well in the AHL and getting some time in the NHL. Uh, he scored on the power play with an assist from Jeremy Davies and Tanner Janot. Janot all over the scoring sheet. Well, yes, he was. All right. Now, normally I don't do this for an opposing player, but in the preseason, after not having one, having the short off season, probably having injuries or bruises or something and not as much time to heal, a uh, hat trick for Frank Bertrano. Give you the credit there, kid. Good game. Good way to make it a, uh, you know, a very strong impression of making the roster. What are you right. going to do for a hat trick? Uh, with an assist from Owen Tippett and Sam Bennett. Uh, Owen Tippett's been uh, not known for his passing. He has a very heavy wrist shot, and it's very accurate. Sam Bennett, formerly of the Calgary Flames, uh, he is uh, in the middle. I'm not sure he was worth the first round pick for the Flames, right. but uh, he got an assist there on the power play. Uh, that accumulates for both power play goals, including the shorty from uh, uh, Trenton. Then we get to OT, 46 seconds in, Sam Bennett with an assist from Johnny Hooby Dooby Doobaro. Sorry, I always wanted to do that just once. <laughs> uh, 46 seconds in, Florida wins. Um, Nashville, they did have a shootout afterwards. Nashville took that two to one. Um, it, 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 all in all, the guys that really impressed me, obviously, are the guys we know most. Guys like Jano. Right. Oh, by the way, Jano's goal was assisted by Davies and Zach Solo. Uh, we apologize. We're a little rusty. We're, we're rusty. We're rusty. <laughs> Just for the players. <laughs> but um, Solo's a really good hockey player. I hope that he, he is back in Milwaukee and gets a chance to get Nashville's attention. Well, Nashville's one of those organizations where if they see you producing, they will offer you a, ch a chance. Right, they will. Look at guys like Freddie Gaudreau. He's playing in, in Minnesota this year. Um, you know, uh, guys like Carrier, who, who, who really worked hard. If you show up in Milwaukee, you work hard, you play the system, you play the game, you do well. Um, it, it does pay off for you very well. Right, generally your award. Correct. Um, all right, so you guys know, you know me well, how do I have my shows? Well, in a post game, I have a draft list. Draft list is consisted of guys who did not play well. By that meaning, 
guys who were online so that got stored on more than once. If I see you have a minus two or more, you did not play well. In that consistent, I have to keep it consistent because I still got to knock off this rust. There's only, I think, two. Yes, there's only two. And one is Cody Glass. First time playing with the team. Yeah. Sorry, buddy, but you still don't get a pass here, even though you show, scored the shootout winner, but you didn't do it in the game. That's what where it matters most. So there's that, and a guy who's constantly on it, Ben Harper. <laughs> right. He, he, he was on it all year last year. Yes, he was. Um, Mark Delgazio, he was a minus one. Uh, Philip Myers, minus one. Jack Matier, minus one. Um, the guy that, uh, shockingly, plus three, Jeremy Davies. Yeah. Um, Dante Fabro was a plus one, which is rare. Right, <laughs> it is. Um, it's good to see him make strides in that. Um, Crapless for Florida. There's only one. And that is Noel Achari. He was a minus three. Uh, he also had um, Three, two giveaways. So he, he did not have a good game. He was pretty solid in the faceoff, but didn't really yeah. have the greatest game. Um, one thing I wanted to give a little kudos to Joseph Labat, 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 and Soren Noel. Uh, nice fight. It was really Heck good. Of a fight. Fight. Yeah, it was a pretty good fight for, for you know, LeBay. I was shocked to see it in preseason, but I mean, it was kind of nice to see some old school hockey. Or they used to do that in preseason. Now, not so much. Well, the other part, like LeBay's trying to make a name for him so that the Preds see him and give him a chance. Noel's trying to make the roster and show that I'm not just a scorer, I can, right. I can be pretty. No, not the guy from the Flyers. Uh, but, you know, um, it, it, it's just nice to see that. And, and Right, it um, is. I, I think that it, it's been really fun um, just covering this offseason because it's been like this all offseason. It has. Know. It's been really weird. We don't know what we're, whether we're coming or going. Every time we leave our house, they sign somebody. We're scared to leave our homes. And then when we do, because we think we're safe. Yeah, the day I left three times, and I think every single time they signed somebody. Yeah. yeah. All righty, folks. Well, that's been our show today. Um, like again, like I said once more, kudos to the Milwaukee Brewers. Thank you, guys. This yeah. is our fourth i think straight playoff appearance and uh they are premier sponsor for the milwaukee afros our owner is part owner of the brewers as well um it's been really fun being able to see that um we enjoy it so much and um, we wish them luck on their playoff run also yep. to step to a brewer that retired today ryan braun uh thank you for all the memories of 14 years um, I like to give these kind of things at, at, for them. It's, it's so special because we all have memories of going we to do. with our significant other and seeing them or, 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 you know, there was a moment, in, you know, we were sitting at a TV watching and he hit like a memorable moment. You know, it, it's just the memories created in sports are so special to families. And uh, they are. thank you for helping cause those memories. Yes, thank you. And I say that to all athletes, including the guy behind me. It's right. been really weird covering this team, knowing Pekka's not coming back. Although it was nice to hear, hear the uh, radio promo with him talking. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I think they're going to have to change that. <laughs> <laughs> but we're looking forward to getting some hockey in. Um, looking forward to seeing some of what our, our other veterans I know they weren't in the lineups today, 
Um, it was kind of like a, they have enough to cover three teams. We could have had a three team split squad, but I guess Florida didn't have enough. Right. So, there were talks of it, but they never did. I could not have imagined doing three games in one day. No. Uh, knocked out by game three. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, like I said, our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. Have a and wonderful please, and will... please help us to grow too. Um, yes. Please like, subscribe, comment, share. Anything will help. Thank you and have a wonderful evening and enjoy the rest of your weekend or the start of your Monday if you're enjoying us with a cup of, jo cup of Joe. <laughs>